Well, it doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to work. And uh, I think it's going to work. Okay, so it's clamped down. The reason I've got it clamped down is so that if I have to put a lot of force on this cap here, like with a wrench, uh, it's not going to twist around on me. So, I think we should try it out. Uh, well, right now I'll just put some pressure on to show you that it does actually work. But I think we should actually do a blank. Okay, that's just hand tight. I'd probably end up using a wrench, you know, when I do the real thing. I don't hear anything. So right now, the uh, pressure inside there should be equal to uh, whatever my uh, compressor systems set at. And uh, it's over 100 pounds. So I have over 100 pounds air pressure inside this little cylinder. Uh, and um, I'm guessing that this would stand maybe, well I'm no expert, but I'm, I'm guessing a couple of thousand pounds pressure before it would burst. I'm just guessing, I'm not an expert. Now I've discovered here that the outside diameter of the plastic pipe is pretty much the same as the inside diameter of the steel pipe. So in other words, it's a pretty tight fit. And I could probably make it fit if I was to pound it in, but then I wouldn't be able to get it out. So the uh, kerf on the bandsaw is uh, almost a sixteenth of an inch. And so that'll narrow it in one direction. And if I sand it down in the other direction, and cut along that sanded area, well, it should fit. Well, I've cut another little piece out of that branch that I found behind the shed in the backyard. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the very best I can to infuse Envirotex right through into the center. Now I put my macro lens on here and I did a, a close-up of this end here. And you can see it uh, looks a lot better on the center than it does on the outside. So it's going to... Possibly the Envirotex won't work its way right through to the center. We'll see. What I'll do is I'll cut it in half afterwards and look at it under a microscope. And we'll, we'll build a tell. Anyway, the next step is to... Uh, completely dry this out. I'm actually going to put it in the oven for a little while and then I'm going to get evacuate as much air out of it as I possibly can and I'm going to degas the Envirotex as best I can and I'm going to take my time and do the best possible job I can. I want to give this Envirotex a fair chance. Well, it's in there. It's under about 115 pounds of pressure right now. And I went through the procedure pretty much the way I had described earlier. The only thing I did that was really different was I put this on first and then I slowly increased the pressure at the tank with the valve. I was kind of worried that maybe even though I had drilled that little tiny hole it could sort of surge in there and I don't know. Anyway, uh, that's about the only thing I did different. I mixed up the uh, Envirotex about 36 minutes ago. I set this thing at 12 o'clock when I started. And I just finished now. And I waited until the Envirotex had completely degassed. And uh, then I put that little uh, blank down, down into the plastic tube, just the way I showed you. 
and then I put the vacuum back on again and I, I watched for bubbles and the, there was slight bubbling but I would say that probably 95 or more percent of the air was out of the blank so uh, now not only is it under atmospheric pressure it's under an additional 115 pounds so that's a difference of 130 pounds and uh, <laughs> like I've said before we'll see what we've got in the morning because I'm going to leave this on all night oh one more thing I guess it's sort of a PS the Envirotex is still fairly liquidy even after 37 minutes now so I don't know if you can see it or not but trust me it's sort of like syrup I don't think it's any thicker right now than it was when I first mixed it up um, be interesting to actually test that and see how much time I've got you know I can actually feel it warming up though it's not hot it's just warm <laughs>